Improvisational learning. At first sight improvisation works in a disorderly fashion and seems unprofitable and ineffective. But this first impression also shows that the process works. Why? Because the process triggers those questions that it wants to trigger. To put it in another way, improvisation works because it contains difference, gaps, looseness, and interspaces, which are available for the active interpretative work of the recipients, thus helping to qualify their experience. In an improvisational process, the actors develop those sensors that they need in order to grasp directly the ambivalence of a situation, to interpret it, and make it usable. Kunha, 2005, says, in the improvisational mode, people act in order to learn. p. 8. Improvisation can thus be described as a technique, that allows to integrate serendipity as a learning process, that involves proactive learning. This does not mean, that analysis is excluded, rather the opposite, the performing aspect of learning is put into focus. Analysis then concentrates on the rearrangement and reinterpretation of material that is gathered through the improvisational process in that way, that it is connectable to new processes in time. The analytic work then relies on qualified experience and the development of complexity sensors that should lead to a transformation of attitudes and thus enable ecological change. But in order to do this, one has to develop abilities needed to recognize change permit change and help to design change. As Mitzberg and Wesley, 2001, stated, people in organizations and social systems may learn through analysis, intuition or improvisation. Analysis is a structured process that may or may not lead to surprising findings. The analytical mode in organizations in general is viewed like an ontological base which is seems to be independent from existing situations, therefore everything is rational by definition, it is possible to go by plans, there is no implicit knowing, sch 1983. The intuition mode derives its learning results from establishing connections that were not previously proposed. In this mode people sense meaning beyond the obvious, but this type of implicit knowing is not yet sanctioned. The improvisational mode is structured very differently, people do not only act in order to learn, but also try to incorporate analytical frameworks into action that becomes a learning laboratory for the reflective practitioner, SCH 1983. Grebner, 2004 showed that an important source for creating value is a mode of serendipity that is caused by exposure to different practices. In the MIC project, the research practice exactly aims at this mode of serendipity, to trigger the process and use the fact, that the different practices carry different forms of surprise. In this way we try to apply what we analyze in our own process. The only way to do this, is to include improvisation in the experimentation and research process itself and to make that visible. Improvisation is the mode of action that ensures the independence of the structures it contains as value and precisely in this way maintains the content of design while keeping the process open. That implies that both scholars and practitioners who practice improvisation also will have to practice recognizing patterns that others will not be aware of and use these patterns pragmatically, subtly, or even trendily. From this, one important factor is emerging, the fact that improvisation does not, as often is expected, need less time and planning. The opposite is the case, to manage disorder in a constructive way, as a cooperative transgression of rational planning, is potentially more difficult, needs more time for preparation and follow-ups, to be too open in the process also may weaken the process and rob it of its direction. Therefore improvisation requires high levels of focus on coordinating measures and interaction. Improvisation often is avoided because there is no time available for interpreting ambivalent designs or settings. This usually results in superficial solutions for new challenges based on a mental shortcut in which old habits or patterns will be institutionalized without analyzing or identifying framework requirements, 
new options or limiting conditions. Why is it worthwhile to invest time in improvisation, that is, active interpretation? Because those who take the time to reflect on situations and their potentials and try to integrate these reflections in open processes of action, are able to accept ambivalence and ambiguity, thus expanding their scope of activity and their effective degrees of freedom. Why? Because they are able to recognize when ambiguity is functional and when it is dysfunctional. Here both can be functional on meta level. If one's improvisational abilities are expanding, the ability to process ambivalence in a given time frame is rising. An ongoing practice of improvisation may enable people to recognize and play on global time horizons as well as macro rhythms.